Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be making this psychedelic sci-fi light tunnel thing. Let's get started. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here in this default scene is we're going to A to select all and X to delete. And then what I'm going to do is go shift A, curve, and I'm going to create a path. And I'm going to scale it up on the X just a little bit, make it a bit bigger. And I'm going to come over here to the curve tab, go to geometry and scroll right down here to depth. And I'm just going to expand this up to create a bit of a tunnel. Now, what I want to do is turn up my resolution a bit that will smooth out this tunnel. Also, I'm going to take my resolution and I'm going to turn this up just in case I do some bending of this curve. We shall see how it turns out. I'm also going to put a camera right here at the entrance. I'm going to go shift a camera and I'll hit zero my number keypad to jump into the camera and then come to view turn on lock camera to view and then i just want to line this guy up so that he's just inside the tunnel it's pretty good i might straighten him out as well so i'll just come over here to these rotations and just clean them up a little bit it looks like 90 will do as well all right cool now we need to make this thing a little bit longer as you can see we can see uh, the end of this tunnel we want to continue this thing out on so it looks like it goes to infinity I'm actually going to split my view for this and uh, come over here and turn off lock camera to view so I can pop out of the camera for this one. And uh, I'll hit E to go into edit mode and actually don't need all of these. Actually, no, we will keep them. I will keep them. Yeah. I'm going to scale on X all these points for this curve. I'm just going to scale out. Um, I might grab X and bring it forward because our camera only needs to see you know this, this back end bit. And that looks pretty good. But I'm also going to grab this final one right here. If I just turn off all these uh, visibilities and controls and stuff, I can just have a bit, bit of a clearer view of my camera. Also, probably a good idea. Let's come over to the camera and let's go ahead and turn on viewport display passport two. We'll just turn that up and then also make sure that lock camera to view is turned off and then I'll zoom in. That will just make the view a little bit bigger so I can really see it clearly. Uh, then I'll come back over here and I'll grab this last point and I'll open up this little side menu here and I'll go to uh, item, go to item and I'm gonna take radius down to zero and then we'll actually close out the tip so it's actually closed fully. Now what I could do as well is I could expand some of these a little bit for us that might be kind of a cool effect but it will be a little hard to tell until we actually get to it um, once we get the texture working on this thing but I'll go ahead and open these up just to give it a maybe a greater sense of space. Uh, so there we go. So we've got this nice tube thing that goes tapers down to a point. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to our shader editor. We're going to turn on rendered view and I'm going to make sure I'm set to EV. I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom and uh, screen space reflections. Probably won't need ambient occlusion. We'll keep it on for now just in case. And we've got no lights in our scene, so we can't see anything at all. And let's go ahead and select our nerves path come to materials and click new. Now in this material right here, what we want to do is we want to create little squares and we want to stretch them out and animate that motion. So let's go ahead and first start off by creating a square system. So let's go here and shift A and we're going to get the Veroni texture. I find this one works really well to create little squares and cubes on things. So let's also go ahead and grab a color ramp so we can go ahead and start thinking about color. So I'm going to take my uh, distance uh, or let's see, what do I want? I'm going to grab and we'll grab distance. That's fine. And we'll plug the color in, not to the base color. We're going to go into the emission. Um, I'll plug it into here for now. Yeah, that should be fine. And now we'll see everything kind of appear. Now, this is giving us um, a gradient, which I don't really want. I want to have just solid uh, lines and solid colors. So I'm going to switch this from linear to constant. And now as I drag this out, you see we're going to get solid uh, fall off. Now we could also um, get solid stuff by using position or color. They tend to give a bit of more of a solid edge, but um, I'm just using distance. You can get to the same point in many different ways. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch this from Euclidean to Manhattan, and that will give us a bit of a square shape. And I'm going to take my random all the way down to zero. And you can see it's starting to look kind of like squares, but not quite. It's a little uh, it's a little different. Um, now, you could actually use these kinds of patterns. You could have different types of patterns to, to achieve this effect. Um, but I'll just I'm gonna show you specifically how to use the get the squares. I'm also going to increase my scale up so I can get a bunch of these. And then we need to use a special kind of vector to position them in the correct way on our uh, cylinder. So I'm going to go here, shift A, and we're going to type in the texture coordinate node. There it is. And I'm going to use the UV. Now, automatically, we get a UV system that's um, generated uh, with a curve uh, by Blender. Now, you can see this is a pretty cool pattern. Like this would be really interesting maybe to use just in itself. I'm also going to grab a mapping node. This will allow me to move it around 
All right, now we don't, I don't want this, this sort of checkered angled pattern at the moment. So I'm gonna switch from Manhattan to Chibichev. That gives me the more uh, square um, texture pattern, but you won't see anything at first to be switched because we just need to drag this down. You can see we need to also flip. Uh, we've got our black and white are backwards. So I'm just gonna flip these around so that we get white squares with black outlines. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now we are seeing some of the these little edges, um, little like nicks I right hear. You can see that triangular um, kind of angle on the shape of that. That's coming from the, um, over here, the resolution. So if I just turn that up more, it's gonna smooth that out nicely. So yeah, keep that at 32, I'll just max it out. Okay, great, so now we've got our nice, uh, our nice things. Now, if I introduce a little bit of random, these guys are gonna start moving around. In a different in different directions, and that is going to give me the look that I want. So I'm going to just paste that out to select which ones I want in there, and then I'm going to take the scale and I'm holding down Shift just so I can get really precise movements. And as I scale down X, they're going to stretch out, and as I scale down Y, they're going to get thinner. So I can use this to kind of decide what size lines I want for this effect. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, make these glow and I want them to glow uh, red, but also, um, and some other colors as well will do, but I also want to be able to have multiple systems, kind of multiple NURBS paths stacked up and see through to all of them. So I want to get rid of everything that's not the lines. I want to kind of cut out these lines so this object becomes transparent where we don't have these lines. So to do that, I'm going to stick this, instead of an emission, I'm going to put it into alpha. And then I'm gonna come over to options and I need to come over here and change my blending mode. So I'm gonna turn it from opaque to alpha hashed and shadow mode to alpha hashed as well. And this will make it a uh, transparent. So if I like add something else to my scene, let's go shift A, mesh UV sphere. You can see, got a UV sphere there. You can't see anything because we don't have light. So I'll just put a quick light to demonstrate. There we go. And you can see it's casting shadows as well, right? So now this is like a transparent object with just these lines. Get rid of that sun. All right, so let's go over here now and we're gonna change our emission. We're gonna brighten it up and we're gonna set it to red. Emission is basically a material property that emits light into our scene. So what I'm gonna do now is I can turn this right up and because we've got bloom turned on, these are gonna to start to glow. I'm also gonna take my world right here at the world tab and I'm gonna drop it to black. Great, now I want this thing to animate. So how do I do that? Well, what I need to do is figure out which location value to change. Um, if I hold down shift again and move in smaller values, I can see that going in the negative direction of the X is gonna give me the result I want. It might be a little different for you, uh, depending on the steps you followed in the order you've done them. So just have a look exactly at which way works best. Now, what I can do here is grab a combine XYZ node, and this is gonna create an XYZ vector that I can then plug into my location. So I'll go ahead and plug this in. But what this does is this gives me the ability to affect stuff individually with other inputs if I want. But I'm gonna just try uh, seeing if this works. I'm gonna hit pound, and then type frame, and then the multiplication symbol, so times, and then point. We'll try 01, and I'll make it negative as well, because remember, we need to be going in the negative direction, in this case, to get it to come towards us. Now, the pound symbol is shorthand in Blender for create a driver. As we're telling Blender, use this little bit of code to create a driver. Frame is a Blender variable that grabs the frame number in our timeline. So as our timeline plays, we're gonna get an update here and it's gonna multiply it by negative 0.01, which will shrink that number way down, make it small. So now the X value would basically be updating uh, constantly as we press play. And there you go. Now you can see we've got this really cool flowing effect. Now, I want to, I've got a few too many, I think. I'm just gonna drag this around to decrease the number that I'm getting. That looks pretty good. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this system. Actually, before we duplicate, let's, let's go ahead and take, um, what I want to do, let's take this and I'm going to turn down my submission a little bit. It's a bit too bloomy, my liking at the moment, but I want to twist it. I want to have this like twisting look to everything. So I'm going to jump back to my 3D viewport, go into edit mode for my spline object here, and I'm going to come over here and grab this first one. And this object right here, tilt under the items uh, menu in the, in the dropout, and we just come over to that tiny arrow and click that. You can grab this and we can turn the tilt up and you can see what it's doing is it's basically twisting the surface of my, my curve. Where did I go? Negative. All right, I'll go same way a bit here with this one. Now I can make this really cool twisting pattern and everything is gonna follow it nicely. I'm gonna tilt this one a little bit too so it really, really goes. It's probably a bit too much. So we'll start off, we've got negative uh, 200 as the tilt for the tip one. 
And then this one drops to 100. This one stays at 100. This one goes to zero. And this one is at positive 50. And I think that's curving it nicely. And you can adjust it. You can even animate these if you want to get um, the rotations to change in your animation. Great. Now I can take this and I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate and then S to scale just to scale this guy up a bit more. All right. So with this outer one, I actually want to change the variation a little bit. Um, so I'm going to actually come over here to where the material is and I'm going to click the double paper icon. This will make it a new material. See, it gave it a new name. Now I can change the values on this one specifically and it'll look a little different. So for this one, I might bring my red down a bit, maybe to a little bit of a purple, maybe bring the emission strength down some. And I'll take these lines and I think I'll make these guys a little bit thinner. Might go a bit blue. That might look nice. Like what if we do something a bit like like this? And then I might slow it down a bit so it doesn't go quite as fast. Instead of 0.01, I might go 0.01. Oh, five. So it's like half the speed. That's pretty cool. I might do one more. So take this and shift D, scale it up. And also want to make sure these don't overlap. When I scaling them, by scaling them, they're going to start intersecting a little bit at the front, I think. So I might grab this one on the X value and bring it forward some. And I'll do the same thing. I'm going to create a new material. And with this one, I'll just adjust a little bit more. I might have like fewer, fewer squares this time. Go for like an orange color. Maybe kind of a teal, slightly red. And I might slow these guys down even more. So 0 0.001, let's say. Okay, now I need to have like sort of as they get closer to the, the point furthest away from it, we want to have them start to glow and get brighter and brighter and brighter. So to really get that, we need to add one more uh, cylinder. And so I'm going to take this the cylinder, Nerves Path 2. I'll just duplicate it one more time and I'll scale it just a little bit. And this time I'm going to get rid of the material. And I'll click new to create a new material and I'll switch it from the principal BSDF to an emission shader. You can see it automatically deletes the BSDF node and adds this emission node for me. And I'm going to grab a gradient texture, drop it here, and I'm going to grab the uh, color and stick it in the color. And then I want to grab a color ramp and actually drop it in between these. It'll automatically insert. And now I can just adjust this. I'll flip these around. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm actually kind of adding in this, this gradient glow to the scene. I'm going to switch this to B spline, which will give me the biggest fall off. But then I'll come in and I'll add another pip over here that's pure black. And this will allow me to just make sure that it does stop at a certain point. Then I can also adjust this fall off here. And then I can use this uh, and kind of pick a color that's going to be something along the lines of, you know, the combination of all these. So maybe something in the, the red space or the teal purplish space, something like that. If I turn the strength up, it can get brighter. I can even come here and add one point right at the end that is very bright and almost white. And that'll give us an even cooler sense of this thing sort of terminating into a bright point. Now, the last thing I want to do to really kind of bring this thing to life and make it look really cool is come over and turn on depth of field with my camera. So I just come to the camera tab, select the camera, go to the camera tab, make sure depth of field's turned on. And then I'm going to bring my F stop right down. So I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to drag this down so I start getting lots of nice bokeh. And then I'm going to change my focus distance. I'll just drag it way up so that I'm focusing way off at the end. And then I'll kind of readjust this until I'm getting nice blurry bits towards the screen. Just kind of dance around and find a nice point for these. Now to really crank this up, uh, we create all different types of looks by having more lines, less lines, fat lines, thin lines. But basically the way you change the scale on these guys is going to have a huge impact on the overall look. So like if you watch this, if I change the X scale on these, go to each of these and just change the X scale so that each of the lines get more, uh, would get shorter. So yeah, it's a totally different feel now, this particular one. Um, I might take this up. I think I like it a bit more when it's red. And I think I do like this one quite, quite long. Maybe the other's short. And then you just come around and adjust the speed as well. So I'm going to increase the speed of this one. And there we go. Tweaking the colors a little bit, pushing these guys more towards red, this guy more towards blue, tweaking their speeds a little bit. And just turning up the, uh, the the background color to more of a red hue as opposed to that purple we had um, lands it here. I think it's a really, really cool system. And what's even cooler is it's fully 3D. So if we were to jump into our camera, lock our camera to view, 
you know, we can actually create some movement here in our camera. We can fly through this system and do all kinds of cool animation with this. Likewise, these are all paths. So we can grab them and go into edit mode and change their position. So I could, you know, make this guy curve up and you can see because we're using the, the UV, uh, it's going to follow the, the contour of the, of the cylinder. So as it, as it, as we bend it out by going to edit mode and changing the control points, we can have all of them twist around in different ways. You can also take this as a curve, right? And you can take your camera and put a constraint on it. You can put a, uh, follow path constraint and then just select one of these guys, you know, like this one, and then zero your camera's position out and come back to this guy and go, uh, fixed position, follow curve. And now your camera is going to follow a curve. You just have to get the, uh, direction, right? So what direction is supposed to face. So by putting it at Z and Y, that's what had it point in the right direction. The trick with this, this constraint is just to zero everything out and then just play with the order till it looks right. And now we can take this offset factor and animate this and our camera will follow these guys and actually follow the tilt as well of the, of the radius of the curve, which is very psychedelic. I hope you found this tutorial really fun and interesting and you learned a few cool tricks. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out the Patreon. We can get this project file if you join at the second tier and up in this month or next month. And uh, yeah, thank you to all the patron supporters that are already there helping me to continue to make these videos and everybody that supports through YouTube by joining. Hit that join button if you want. Grab the cool perks you've got there as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, see you later. Bye.